Today, we are going to be talking about skincare and the sun. And with me is Doc Emmy. Hi. Who is a dermatologist? Yes. I practice in Alabang and BGC. Nice. And you do all sorts of uh, yes. skincare stuff? I do care pathologic stuff? and aesthetic dermatology. Pathologic? Yes. All right. And then aesthetic as well? Yes. Today, I invited you here because I wanted to talk about a topic that um, I experienced recently, mm -hmm. which is sunburn, okay. the sun, mm -hmm. and I want to talk about some of the myths or the realities of it and skin cancer okay. because that's something that a lot of um, the people that are watching mm -hmm. my vlog have been asking me about. Yep. So I wanted to get your opinion, but I want to, I'll state also my opinion on it. So first of all, what is your take on skin cancer and the sun? Okay, um, UV exposure is linked to skin cancer formation, but of course, you need to have that genetic predisposition to develop skin cancer. Okay. Uh, together with uh, very, very strong sun exposure. Right. And your genes if you're predisposed. Okay, so um, the incidence of skin cancer versus the exposure to the sun, is there a direct correlation that they've been able to do or there is no direct co correlation that they've been able to do? To do to show that it is really sun causing skin cancer there is like direct correlation especially for patient that has certain genetic uh, disorders mm -hmm. and like for example squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell, car cell carcinoma is really directly linked to the sun exposure and of course uh, among caucasian melanoma is mm -hmm. linked to sun exposure okay melanoma is cancerous yes it's, okay it's type of skin cancer that's a bit dangerous or more uh, aggressive than the use the known squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma. Okay, so the other two sound foreign to me. Mm -hmm. So be, not being yes. a doctor, and most people uh -huh. are not doctors. So can you explain what you mean by basal? Yes. And uh, then what's the other one? Um, squamous cell carcinoma. <laughs> okay. So, so those so, types right. are relatively um, not aggressive skin cancer. Uh, we're just familiar with melanoma because that's the deadly type of skin cancer ah yeah. okay mm -hmm. is that but all three are directly related yes they're to the sun exposure yes they're linked to sun exposure okay so here's my take on this mm -hmm. um how much sun would you say is dangerous for us is there a certain amount or avoid it altogether oh we need sun exposure because we need UV for vitamin D and uh, to energize our body, but too much sun exposure could actually predispose you to develop skin cancer. Okay. If so, it's too much. Right. So I like how you said that. You said could predispose you yes. to skin cancer. Yes. You didn't say that it could give you skin cancer. Yes. It could predispose mm -hmm. you. So what is the um, the right amount of sun to be able to? generate the vitamin D3 and also to be able to avoid the, the predisposition to skin cancer. Actually, what we recommend is you expose, uh, I mean, you get UV, the natural UV, so you get that natural vitamin D. Um, during the time that's not, the sun, ex uh, sun rays is not too intense. That's around morning, early a.m. That's 6, maybe to 8. Okay. Because 9 is already... Too sunny. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. And just five to ten minutes of sun exposure is enough for you to get that um, UV that you need. And two more than that, you don't need that right. actually. If okay. you just after vitamin D three. But of course, some they want to tan, right. so they need more sun exposure. So that's the problem. I think mm -hmm. the problem is throughout history, uh, the way I see it is that the sun, I don't think has ever been really the problem here. Eh? The sun is yeah. doing its job and we yes. need the sun. The yeah, problem like is Superman. Right. We need the sun. <laughs> I agree. I was about to say that. That we're like Superman. Yeah. We need the sun to be able to nourish us and give us strength. Imagine a world with no sun. Yeah. We're going to die. Mm -hmm. Imagine a world where you're living in. With, sun is our friend. It is yeah. not so. I don't. I, I'm a little bit surprised at how. I don't know who's doing the the media on this to, parang make sun the bad guy here, that, it, yeah. right? And I think here's the thing for me. So, the, as a I think as a dermatologist, mm -hmm. you're probably thinking, but if you expose in the sun, then that means yeah. you're gonna get wrinkles. Yeah, exactly. It depends <laughs> on your concern too, because right. if so it's what, skin cancer, then. Uh, that's a, a different one, but it's if it's like uh, for anti-aging, then you really need to protect your right. skin, okay. especially the face area. 
so to prevent the I mean wrinkles. So here here's here's my here's mm-hmm. my um, I guess how you weigh it. Mm-hmm. So for a woman, because they're probably thinking, my God, I don't want to get wrinkles. So if you don't want to get yeah. wrinkles, don't don't expose yourself to the sun. Well, you can expose yourself to the sun, but protect yourself. So you protect your skin. There's a lot of ways to protect it, like sunscreen or physical sun protection, like hat, white right. brim hat, the back. Ah, right? okay. You so can be creative. So if you don't want to age, but then again, you're well, not- you will age. It's just that you prevent like that formation. I mean, wrinkle formation, like right. Yeah. Or what do you call those uh, those spots that that oh, happen the when you age old? age spots like solar lenti jeans or lenti go solar yeah, lenti those are those yeah. those like mis- like, discolored or yeah round things that happen yes, in your face yes or melasma melasma yeah. that's what Especially, you call it that's very common among Asian skin yeah. oh mm-hmm. okay okay so so for me it's like this um for the longest time I uh, I was uh, staying away mm-hmm. from the sun and. My problem with that was eventually when I got myself checked, mm-hmm. my vitamin D3 was practically low. nil. Yeah. It was so low. And um, so I asked my doctor mm-hmm. what she would recommend. She goes, you need to get out in the sun. Mm-hmm. So two ways to get vitamin D3, go out in the sun or take capsules. Mm-hmm. The exactly. problem with the supplements is that it's not the same quality of vitamin of D as you would get yes. from the sun. Yes. So I said, okay, I'll go out in the sun, but I don't like the sun. Mm-hmm. That's, that was how I was thinking before. And I said, okay, I'll put sun, sunscreen or sunblock. And apparently, correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. but the sunblock does block the UV mm-hmm. from allowing your body to absorb it to create the needed vitamin D3. Yeah. Yes, so, partly that's correct. But if you um, like leave some areas like your mm, arms and just protect your face, which you don't want the sun exposure to be, right. then you would get the vitamin D and you would prevent formation of wrinkles. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So it, you could you could expose certain parts of your yes. body and it would be the same thing. Yes. Because all you need to do is expose certain parts. Yes, to get that UV. Like my arms, yes, exactly. legs. And protect your face. I could still do that. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay. So the way to protect the face. So here's here's the issue I have. Mm. And again, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Sure. Uh, I decided to not use any sunscreen protection whatsoever. Okay. Now... I started doing that because I was reading up on this Mm -hmm. and this is what I got out of it. Mm -hmm. Apparently, being Asians and for Asians and blacks, this is going to be very uh, important. We have a, uh, we produce a high amount of melanin. Melanin, yes. Melanin. The pigment. The Mm -hmm. pigment and melanin protects, is our natural sun protector. Exactly. It's our natural sunblock. Yes. Okay. So how does melanin work and how does it protect you from the sun? Basically, it blocks the UV rays. Mm, okay, yes. and how is melanin formed? Um, when you are exposed to the UV, your melanocytes, that's the, that's the part of the cell that forms the melanin. It will induce the melanocytes to produce melanin Okay. when you're exposed to the UV. That's why when you, ex- when you are Asian and exposed to UV, you tend to tan because you produce that melanin pigment. Versus um, a Caucasians yes. who don't produce as much melanin. As much melanin and a different type of melanin. So that's why yeah. they burn. Yes, but we could actually burn too. If, if it's too much sun exposure, you'll probably burn too. Yeah, if it's too much. For, even for Asians? Even for Asians. All right, but yeah. for Caucasians, you said there are two types of melanin? Yeah. So what is the melanin type that Caucasians have? They, they have actually pinkish type of melanin okay. and it's not that protective against ah, you. Yeah. All right. So it doesn't protect you as much. As much. as. Okay. So um, I read somewhere, but then again, I'm not sure. Would your skin already be damaged before the melanin is formed or no? Partly. Yeah. Partly. Yes. Okay. But actually your, your skin has like um, its own protective mechanism. So if you have or you take antioxidant, that's that will help you uh, fight the free radicals from the UV even mm. before you produce that melanin. So then the melanin is produced, then you're safe, right? Yeah. So that's what happened to me when I went to Europe. Mm-hmm. I was out in the sun. First day, I didn't realize how, how sunny it was because mm-hmm. it was cool. And I didn't realize I was out in the sun for hours. Hours, So wow. the next day... Yeah, that's really tricky, Daba. Right, because of the cool wind. You yeah, don't feel and the... you, you want the sun right. so it, because it warms you. Right, so then I didn't realize it until the next day. And then the next day, that's when I was like really, really tan, tan, like extremely tan. No sunburn, just tan. No, didn't get sunburn. No sting. No okay, sting, which is good. which is amazing. I didn't get sting, except, except for my legs. That's mm-hmm. where I got stung. Mm-hmm. But And it was red. But generally, okay. I was just really extremely tanned. Tan. I looked like 
May I <laughs> really dead? Okay, I've I've heard kasi that people were saying some doctors or dermatologists mm-hmm. were claiming kasi that by the time the melanin is produced, it means that you've already your skin is already inflamed and you're already, it's already damaged and you're already um uh it's yes, already bad actually, now. There is like some r- radicals, free radicals formed already. Mm-hmm. Before, because you have you need that stimulation for you to form melanin right. pigments. That's why sunscreen is protective. Right. Still protective. Okay. Yeah. So my issue with sunscreen is this. Mm. So I read mm-hmm. that the skin is absorbent. Yep. It absorbs mm-hmm. whatever you put on it, mm-hmm. right? And there's a percentage that they said it. This one you guys have to to research on this, but the percentage I saw was sixty five percent absorb like it absorbs 65 yeah. percent of all the whatever you put on it or something mm-hmm. like that it actually depends on the formulation okay yeah. so it depends on the actual chemical and the yes, molecules so exactly and the quality if it's lipid soluble or water soluble yeah. okay mm-hmm. so here's my take on this um the skin is so absorbent mm-hmm. and sunblock or sunscreen yeah. is made of chemicals mm-hmm. right it's not like organic stuff. It is chemicals, yeah. man-made chemicals. And you're putting that on your skin mm-hmm. every day. Mm-hmm. Now, you're putting the, all these chemicals as close as possible to you. Your skin is somehow absorbing some of it. Some of it. Some yeah. of it, right? So, I'd rather not put anything and just have the sun. I'd rather get the sun than mm-hmm. all these chemicals on my body on a daily basis. I think, uh, and, and again, you can correct me on this one, yeah. but isn't it true that when you're pregnant, that they actually, the doctor will tell you not to put any makeup, not to put sunblock, yeah. sunscreen, no, nothing mm-hmm, on your skin. Mm-hmm. And they do that because they know how absorbent the skin is. Yeah. Yet, when you're not pregnant, they won't give you that same advice. Because it's kind of tricky for pregnant women because it's, you know, like, no research actually is... Sure. Yeah. Because it's... Has proven. Like, that has it, proven, yeah. Yeah. So... To be safe, just avoid it. Right. But among like um, normal adults, usually there's like a criteria for you to tell that it's um, it warrants more investigation, mm-hmm. like more than like certain nanogram per ml right. of like a chemical. If it's detected that like that amount, you should like investigate further. But more than or less than that, it should be safe. Yeah. They, they they develop those um, parameters to be able to say if it's safe or not safe. Okay. And the thing is, the the recent articles or the one um, that's um, saying that sunscreen is well absorbed, uh, they actually put a lot of sunscreen on the on mm. the skin. That's like seventy five percent of the body. Yeah. So imagine the like seventy percent. Yeah. So body. it will definitely ab- and you reapply every two to two to right. four hours. And here's the thing I found is that the face is more absorbent than the rest of the body. Yeah, because you can say that because there's a lot of um, the pores and are, the vessels, the, the yeah. vessels, ah, okay. and the, of course the thickness of the skin. Right. So yeah. it's more absorbent. So for me, it's it's that, and um, the way I see it is mm-hmm. like this. If the doctors are being careful because you have mm-hmm. a baby, so yeah. they tell you not to put anything mm-hmm. on, I like that standard. Mm-hmm. Then I think we should just have that standard to be on the safe side because right now the incidence of cancer overall, not just skin cancer, yeah. cancer in general is very high. And I think it's very high because we're surrounded by all these chemicals, toxins, mm-hmm. from the air we breathe to the thing mm-hmm. we put on our skin to the food we eat. Yeah. Everything is processed already. That's true. And when you talk about processed, in, ingesting processed mm-hmm. stuff, not just the stomach, the skin mm-hmm. ingests whatever is on it. So for, for skin care, mm-hmm. the way I see it, and I like what you suggested, if you had a choice between protecting your, your skin mm-hmm. from the sun, yep beyond the 10 to 15 minutes Mm -hmm. uh, that you should spend every day the first line of defense should be physical protection protection. which is like a hat hat. wearing long sleeve shirts Mm -hmm. whatever it may be right that's the first line of defense if if, if you can't avoid the sun or you you don't have that then the second would be yeah sunscreen sunscreen. and sunscreen you have different um, formulation there's physical and chemical sunscreen and if you're too worried about or your skin is very reactive then we actually suggest or advise our patients to just use physical sunscreen because it's less it's it's not absorbed at all right Mm -hmm. of course yeah physical sunscreen Mm -hmm. is not absorbed right so did you know i i I, this is something i read recently Mm -hmm. that in hawaii 
that the sunscreens are now organic mm -hmm. because they passed a law banning all sunscreens at one point mm -hmm. because it was so damaging the chemicals that it was whitening yeah. the corals. Can you imagine how damaging all that sunscreen is that it would damage the corals and whiten it I and know. bleach it and you put that on your skin. Yeah. So if you want good sunscreen, go to Hawaii because now all the sunscreens have passed a certain um, standard wherein it doesn't damage the coral. Yeah. So there's no more chemicals in it. That's actually a good. Uh, that's actually a good act, or they. Yes, it is. But they mm -hmm. did it for the corals, not mm -hmm. for people. <laughs> but I think they should have done it for people yeah. too, because there are people that I think right now are really abusing the sun, putting sunscreen mm -hmm. and everything, and then there's all, just uh, you're putting all these toxins in yeah. your body. I, I really don't agree with I that. I think because it's 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 the way you think about it. Some some people would like, okay, I can expose myself to the sun unlimited i just have to wear sunscreen all over my body it's not the way you think it should not be that way it should be like um you you use sunscreen for protection in in moderation to prevent the damage possible damage but not abuse it because everything anything that you, you abuse yes is not good right <laughs> and i think that's a problem people mm -hmm. right now say they go out in the sun and then they bake for like no. two to three hours and then they put sunblock or sunscreen no. thinking as long as I put that, I'm okay. No. So that's you're getting not, you're getting not. the worst of both worlds. Yes, you're consuming a lot, and you're you don't really need that. Like and instead of just preventing, right. and just do it in moderation. Like, so that mm -hmm. applies to everything else, yes, actually. Actually, everything. Right? But Lahat. but we're talking about sunscreen. <laughs> yeah, but, sunscreen. But just to just to add that, like when you said said mm -hmm. that, it's like when people are like saying, "Oh, I'll just um, drink a lot of soda." Yeah, or all these sugary drinks because yeah. I work out anyway. Yeah, Parang, that's whoa. a bad way of looking at things. Or less is more. So if you can do or consume in or moderation. apply less, yes, it's better. Just right. avoid the sun. I mean, not totally avoid it, but don't expose yourself to too much. Too much to it, right? Yeah. So, and I, I'm a believer of the melanin as a protectant mm -hmm. for the sun, a natural product, protectant, yeah. and we have that. Mm -hmm. Again, as long as you don't abuse it, because anything, if you stay out in the sun for like every day, eight, nine, yeah. ten hours a day, you're gonna die anyway of, of whatever, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, for for the sunblock, mm -hmm. for me, it's I, I maintain I said that you don't use it if you don't need to avoid the chemicals on your skin. Now, if your concern though mm -hmm. is aging, aging, I mean yes. the wrinkles, well, you if, have to apply it if religiously vanity, if, right. on your face. <laughs> so if vanity is more important than cancer. <laughs> no, it's not that way. It's not that. It, it's a different thing. So basically if you're concerned, so when you see a patient and consult to you, so you ask what's their primary concern and then you just give advice, like the sound advice. So, okay, mm -hmm. all right, fair enough. So for me, it's like this. Right now, I'm at the point where um, if you, just for the people that don't know, a sun, mm -hmm. right? Exposing yourself to the sun at the right amount gives you vitamin D3. Yep. Vitamin D3 is essential to fighting cancer. Exactly. So, so here is the dilemma people are having. Mm -hmm. They're saying, if I go out in the sun too much, too much is mm -hmm. the word, then of course, there's a higher probability they're gonna get skin cancer, mm -hmm. right? Higher probability, not yeah. necessarily that they will. Yes. Higher probability. It's probability. Versus if they don't get the sun and they mm -hmm. don't have vitamin D3, that probability of getting all other cancers is much higher mm -hmm. than the probability of getting skin cancer. I, I honestly think that it's all about balance. You you just have to know where what's too much. Mm. And you don't have to like really avoid it yep. because you need it. Yes. It's like natural for you to need the UV. It's just you have to do it in moderation. Right. And protect your skin, especially <laughs> your face. <laughs> so okay, so for the people that are that are concerned about the vanity part, mm -hmm. so the idea is, yes, put some physical sunblock, yeah. a hat or anything to protect the face mm -hmm. along, and then the rest of the body you can expose. So that yeah. you still get your vitamin D three. That's and what you, you would prevent say. the formation of the pigments, especially if you're like doing some procedures. If you're doing exfoliation, peeling, laser, yeah. you're you're not supposed to expose yourself to UV because it's very sensitive. That's why you really have to protect it. You use sunscreen, physical sunscreen. That's very important. But of course, you can always expose your arms, your arms, your yeah, legs. Yeah, definitely. I can take off my shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So it's just that if you're doing a procedure, laser procedure, and after that you expose yourself, that's like. 
You're asking no, for trouble. No, yeah, yeah, you're asking mm, for problems. Okay. Yes. Oh, great. So, okay. So, I think I've come to a conclusion mm -hmm. uh, and a, a, a nice compromise mm -hmm. in the way I look at things. Because I don't use sunblock, like I said. Yeah. And if you ask me, because I would not recommend people to use mm -hmm. sunblock. I would recommend people to just uh, go out in the sun in moderation. Mm -hmm. Don't abuse the sun. And that way, you're getting your vitamin D3. Mm -hmm. But I like your suggestion for people that are vain. Not really vain, vain. if they have Sorry. particular concerns. <laughs> yes. Come on. Okay, okay. So I don't mean vain as in like um in a in a bad thing. Yeah. I meant vanity is of course yeah, part of our yeah. human nature, so yeah. fine. If but, they have particular skin or like pigmentation or face concern or wrinkles, then yeah. Then wear a physical sunscreen. If you really don't have any physical sunscreen and you can't avoid it, then use sunblock. But if you're gonna use sunblock, find the organic ones. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, I would suggest Talaga to look uh, at what is approved in Hawaii because those ones yeah, are as close as possible to the safest mm -hmm. ones. I still don't agree that I really believe because that any chemicals is I stay away from. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to use sunscreen, get the ones that are approved in approved Hawaii. In. So that's okay. that's what I would also recommend. there's like oral sun protection so they can oh. use that or okay. try that. It's it's actually photoimmune protection. It's not a replacement for physical sunscreen, but it actually fights the free radicals created by UV exposure. So you won't burn. Okay, so what is that? Now, now I, yeah. I don't know about it's that one. It's actually extracted from fern. It's a uh, Peliocotomus extract. So, English? Yes. <laughs> Peliocotomus extract is from fern, and it actually protects you from... Fern is a... It's a... Plant? Plant, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's an extract. Extract from plant. Oh, okay, yeah. so... Uh, when they extracted by is the process of extraction uh, chemical free that one I'm not so sure mm. but it's okay. usually GMP and like it's you know it's okay so where, where, where can you buy that uh, it's uh, it depends uh, actually it's available online but right. you have to look for a good source okay yeah. so if I take that for example that like, it'll help with what the formation of melanin no it's it's like um, photoimmune protection, meaning um, it will fight the free radicals formed from UV exposure. Could I take that, for example, that way the free radicals is being fought by mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. and then I still have my melanin forming. Yeah. It'll still, mm -hmm. It won't exactly. stop the formation of melanin. It won't. So yeah. the good thing is, at least I'm fighting that. That's my first line. Yes. Then the melanin yes. protects me overall yeah. at the end of it. Yep. Oh, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look into yeah. that. Wow, I just yeah. learned something mm -hmm. new today. All right. I yeah. should, you know, we should come up with our own fern product and then sell it right now. I bet you people <laughs> are going to buy it. We're going to call it Doc Emmy. Doc yeah, Emmy's pwede. fern. Okay, fern. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's how easier it is. to remember. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, all right. So, um... So that that's I guess that's that concludes our talk about skin, mm -hmm. sun, sun exposure, skin cancer, yep. and sunblock. And I, I like I like the results. So anything else you want to add to that, or final thoughts for our viewers? Yeah, it's a, like sun is our friend. You just have to um, know wh what is like moderate and enough. Do not abuse it. Like you don't have to stop everything because you really need the sun. For you to be healthy it's just that overexposure that's anything actually overeating you know right, right in anything in anything so yeah great mm -hmm. okay so thank you very much doc amy for your time and thank um you. <laughs> i learned so, so many new things today and <laughs> it so changed much. my perspective on how mm -hmm. how the sun is sunblock and now i have a new one fern which yes. is going to be my new friend Oral sunscreen yeah yeah mm -hmm. all right thank you very much okay. i hope you guys learned something as well yes I'll see you on the next podcast.